Hello, I'm Sean Kent Hayashi with Sock and Valley Cute and Cuddly Toy Schnauzers. This little miniature schnauzer girl is Godiva, and she is currently groomed in the teddy bear style. We love our teddy bear schnauzers. Recently, I admitted to myself that we were having a bit of a challenge with the teddy bear style of grooming. And so I sent a text message to my dear friend, Amy Lee, the Go Groomer. Anybody who wants to do dog grooming at home needs to meet my dear friend, Amy Lee, the Go Groomer. Honeybee, let's tell our friends about the adventure that we had this week. Do you remember that it all started, Honeybee, with me sending Amy Lee this text Hi, Amy and Joy. This is your friend, Sean. I'm Amy, out. we need your help with our teddy bear schnauzers. We love this look. We regularly get people who ask us for this look. This is one of my boys. This is David Bowie. We love the teddy bear look and we want to be able to perfect it. And several of the people who work with me would like to learn from you to make it happen. You open to the idea? Honeybee, wasn't it exciting when we got the text back after Amy saw that little video clip? And Amy said, yes! Well, let's show everybody exactly what happened and what when we When we arrived, one of the very first things we did was take before photos so we'd be able to show the before and after result. How cool is this? Look at this arm in Amy's salon where she is able to clip two dogs in at once so that they can be together. Well, both Kim and Sandy have two or more. Kim has four of my little schnauzers. It's easy to dry them up here together too. So when we pull our stand dryer over because they're so small, they can share that space of the dryer. And there's a really awesome table. If if you do want to upgrade your table, it's, it's the new WAGS table. It is amazing. It has a big surface like this one, which is important, especially for the two dogs. But not just that, just giving you room to work. And it has a very nice, versatile overhead grooming arm that has many different hooks on it. You can adjust it, and it's very sturdy, and I love it. So, Amy... Turning this boy into a teddy bear style schnauzer rather than the traditional schnauzer. Eager to hear from you how you would advise me to approach this. Grow him from a traditional schnauzer trim into a teddy bear trim. Well, first of all, we, we realize we don't need the furnishings for the schnauzer. This is distinguishing him right now as a schnauzer trim, and we don't need that. So what I would do is I would shorten it. Maybe you don't want to match the length right now. This looks like, you know, you would have to go about a quarter of an inch on a guard comb to match this length. You could, you could do that. You could simply right now just take the skirting off and, and, and the chest, and we could just have some full fun legs for a little while while we're growing this out. I think that's a good idea. It's a great look. Sorry, baby, you have to stay awake. So what we would do is, is we get our guard combs, Oh, I have, I have <laughs> groomer envy all of a sudden. Uh, oh, my word. I do, Please but you know me. what? I come here and I just get so excited about all the possibilities, Amy. <laughs> yes, no big deal. But so you check them out, buddy. You go ahead. What we got to realize, and this is something you can do on any dog that you're getting ready to trim. Before you say, what card comb am I going to use? Well, let's get them out and let's, let's as, a, act like it is a comb. And if that hair reaches the top of these little knobbies, this shows you that this, his coat right now is about a quarter of an inch in length. Do you see that? Because this is a quarter inch guard comb. So that tells me that if I use this quarter inch guard comb and took this off, I'm sorry, baby, that would even these two areas out. So you could even him out like that, taking that off and just let him wear some fuller legs. I would still take this down a little bit if it were me. 
tame it down. Or you could you could start by giving him a full body and leg length of a of a, a quarter of an inch guard comb to take this off. This is distinguishing him as a schnauzer trim right now, and you're trying to get away from that. Or you um, you could just take this off for now, let it grow a little, and then maybe you know when he's grown out a little, and you can go up to this three eighths of an inch. When this reaches three eighths of an inch, which it's close here, but not so much, you could take these legs off right now with a three eighths of an inch and it's really not going to show much of a variation, but it's going to be shorter. These legs are going to be shorter. But what you're doing is you're tying his groom in and taking him out of this schnauzer look immediately. That's just for the body. So that would take the schnauzer look away on the body and the legs. And then we know that, yeah, hi, big boy, I really love you. So we know that we want to grow this into a teddy bear, which means that we, we do need to grow out these cheeks. Um, we may be able to actually tame this beard in a little bit like this to, to not seem to take so long for this to grow out. Because if, if we shorten this beard in a little bit, it's going to quickly all start to gel a little bit when his cheeks start to grow out a little. So we will want to grow all this in. Obviously, schnauzers have this little bit of an angle trim here. He's in a great trim. Um, and the eyebrows, what we would do there, what you can do here, I would take the, the points off of the schnauzer eyebrow and start to make more of a, a round look. Right now, he, this is distinguishing him as a schnauzer. The short cheek top skull is short. That distinguishes schnauzer. And we're trying to change some of these things to bring him into a little bit of a teddy bear look. Although I think he's gorgeous in the schnauzer trim. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. But it's okay. We all because love you, Mocha. We love him. And he can go back to it anytime he wants, yeah. you know. I often trim the earlobe gently, carefully with a 10 blade just to get rid of some of this so this ear can hang. But you certainly wouldn't want to trim any of this. We want to let that grow in. And we want to let this grow in just from the top, the back of the skull forward. We need to let that grow. And from the jawline, you can feel a dog's jawline. That we need to fill in. We need to fill that in. And we can, you know, we can shorten this right now and okay. start to round this up. Okay, that'd be great. So that'd be a way to take his look and change it a little bit now, but still like, let, let him look like he's wearing an actual look, mm -hmm. you know, and not like, oh, that dog's in the middle of growing out or whatever, you know. We don't want him to look like that. We want him to always look good, definitely. So those are some options with this beautiful boy to take him into a teddy bear trim. Oh, Amy, I'm excited. Great. We're doing a teddy bear trim on Nestle, and I'm going to ask you, and this is your dog, Kim. Yes. About anything that you guys would, would, might think that you want to uh, change today. So we'll call it refining her teddy bear trim. So now we have Nestle up on the table. She's a beautiful white chocolate at some point. A, indeed, yep. Okay, because awesome. be, because she's in our guardian program, Aww. that is a uh, uh, yes. She's gonna be a great mom. She is so calm yes, and sweet. She she's great. So she's in a teddy bear trim. She is a full pure red schnauzer, mm -hmm. miniature schnauzer, technically, I guess, toy schnauzer, but she's in a, a teddy bear trim, which is adorable. She's pulling it off like she's a diva. So <laughs> That's, there... her, her sister is Godiva <laughs> the diva. <laughs> I'll never forget that. They called her that the best. That's Go diva. Good diva. <laughs> so is there before we get started here because we're going to get these dogs working here bathing drying brushing and getting them all ready for their haircuts so i like to assess grooms before i even think about trimming a dog is there anything that we that you would like modified on this trim as far as you can think of yeah so i love her eyes so i love to be able to see as much of her eyes as i can I can understand that. Also, she tends to, um, when she goes to the bathroom, get some residue stuck to her backside. So 
keeping that really yeah. um, tight and clean time is big. important too. Yep, it's time for a sanitary yes. trim back up. Yeah. That's all it is. Yep. Okay, so we're, we want to keep her hygienic, obviously. Yes. That should always be a goal with grooming. Yes. It's always to, you know, pull pads, you know, yeah. to clean all this out so they're not tracking in mulch and dirt and mud yes. and stuff. So it's just the hygienic part. We call all that sanitary trimming. Yeah. So opening up her eyes so we can see them better. I want to point out a couple things that um, I've noticed with teddy bear trims. When we have a, a dog and a full, nice little round fluffy head, Sometimes if we just make a few minor trims, and we'll do this when it she's when it's trim time. Sometimes curling our scissor back and taking this off opens that eye up yes. right there. Just just that from like the mm -hmm. from the corner of her eye up. Leave this alone. We're gonna scissor that in with the cheek hair. Okay. But sometimes just rounding that like that opens the eye up a little bit. And we're still gonna have this nice fluffy stuff that is gonna give her the full look. And and trimming here just a little bit with blending shears right in front of the eyes, I think is gonna open that up and we're gonna see these eyes because we, we do, we want, we want a nice little triangle here on the teddy bear, the teddy bear head, which is the nose and the two eyes. They make a triangle and let's let that be the center of her face. Well, part of what I love that I see you doing here Amy and Kim. Uh, Amy, you're starting out by really examining the dog hands on, getting a feel for what's actually happening under all this hair. And mm, I realize we don't normally do that. We normally start with the bath. And by the time we've, you know, we comb, we brush, and then we do the bath. But we haven't put the plan in our head, the vision in our mind of what we're going for. So this is really helpful to distinguish this. Always try to do that. As a professional, I always do it. I get the dog up here before I even brush him, or maybe I will start brushing her. And part of what I'm doing is I'm preparing her coat for bathing, but I'm also feeling her body structure. What do I have to work with? She's got some coat. Um, maybe the coat's um, hiding things that I'm unaware of. You know, maybe she has a very slim tuck up and I just can't tell because of all this hair. That means I don't want to go too short here or I'm going to accentuate her having a slim tuck up and we want her to have an overall fluffy look. Um, having your hands on the dog tells you so much about what you'll be working with before you work with it. Even feeling the shape of the muzzle and because this is a schnauzer, schnauzers tend to be a little boxy in the, in the muzzle, a little bit boxy. And so that's fine for a teddy bear trim. We just have to remember that. We have to compensate a little bit for that and trying to create a round look instead of that nice boxy face that a schnauzer naturally has. They kind of have a nice flat top skull, schnauzers. And we, we want a dome shape. So we know if we're just coming over that with our guard comb, we might be accentuating her flat dome. Whereas maybe we, maybe we want to scissor that instead of use a guard comb in that instance, because uh, let's take a, um, a, a Bouvier has a nice flat, hard top skull. We wanted to make that round. If we're following the lay of the dog's head, we're getting flat, yeah. flat top skull because that's the shape of that dog's head. So when we know we want to do something round on a dog that has a flat top skull, we we will probably want to use a a larger guard comb than we would want to go, and then scissor it down a little bit, scissor the shape, and just set the length with a larger comb. But we know we're going to be scissoring it all up and resetting it with shears. So that, that's something to think about. Um, so she's gorgeous. I How about the so. ears? How are you feeling about her ears? I love her ears. I do. I love I love her. Her. I am. She's great. <laughs> yes. But I like that her ears just kind of shape right into the, the, the head. And what you get is you get a dog whose ears and head move together versus like honeybee, her ears are now longer. Hey, honeybee. Then a little bit longer. They're almost right at that sweet spot, really, actually. Hers are nice. But <clears throat> so, like, 
a Bichon would you would see that when they turn their head the whole head including the ears is moving so with a teddy bear trim there's two options we can have an ear that is distinctively there separated from the top skull or we can have an ear that's incorporated in the head so and and we will scissor that ear shape in with the round head so that it all moves when she moves that's an option but it is a slightly different look mm -hmm. and and right now she kind of has that like her top skull hair is blending right into her ears there's no distinct that's the look that i like and that's the look in the inspiration photo is more of the ears incorporated in with the top skull. so yeah. there's there's the inspiration photo where you see you don't really distinguish the ears mm -hmm. but they're blended in beautifully they and blend then right in with the top knot. here's what i call the mistake where this was meant to be a teddy bear cut but his ears are changing the look and mm -hmm. so kim i'm so curious to know what's your preference since she's your dog and the truth is this is really all about preference isn't it mm -hmm. there's not one right way to do it yeah no i like the rounder look the more traditional teddy bear cut where the head is all one yes. unit let's yes. just, you know where it's all one unit yeah so there we go inspiration photo what we have to be careful of is that we do not take a guard comb anywhere but really we could we could set some length with a guard comb right on the top skull but nowhere in here or we're already going to shorten that okay. and separate that and and then what we'll have to do is after we set our length on the top when we bring this into the ear we need to fluff it out like this is kind of hard to do right now her, her coat's not ready yet we have to wash it but and then we are scissoring right over top of her ear set is right here that's where her ear connects to her head okay. so we'll be like scissoring a shape to okay. just and we're probably going to use curved shears and we're going to just shape that in like that like i'm not down here with my shears i'm out here we're just shaped if i trim i brought my amy lee sapphire shears that i love so much today if i trim some i do if i don't i don't i i'm holding my arm i'm moving my shoulder you don't you when you scissor you don't want to move your hand, you'll have um, no accuracy. Okay. It is awkward at first to hold shears, even just to hold them. So we want to shape our curved shear, the shape of the angle we're looking for, hold it and scissor it. And we're gonna be doing that later, so. Okay. So that would be one of the biggest mistakes we would make if we, if we shortened that here by using guard combs on the whole top skull. And her top skull is from corner of the eye, corner of the eye, above the ear set. This is top skull. Okay. If we took all that off with a guard comb, we're gonna end up separating those ears. Yeah. And since we don't wanna do right, that, right. We, we may not use a guard comb on this top head just to avoid it, we may have to hand scissor it. But this what, is such an important distinction, and frankly, I one I had never thought of. So I knew you were going to help us get clear on the distinctions that make the difference. Yeah, that's what I want to help you understand that. So now you're thinking, well, how much, how, how long do I leave that top skull, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a tough thing to decide. So you're like, okay, I'm hand scissoring it, but how long do I leave it? Well, first of all, remember I said, let's picture a triangle from this side to this side. So one line here, another line connecting that eye to the nose, and another line connecting that eye to the nose. We get an imaginary triangle right here on Nestle's face. This is the center focal point of Nestle's head, is that triangle. So if we leave too much here, scissor that, and too much here, she's going to look very unbalanced yes. with her body right. with her body so we were amy has taught me how important it is to dilute shampoo and to never use it right out of the bottle like this amy i'm so grateful that you've taught me that beginners wouldn't know do i have did i dilute it too much now or is it diluted enough they wouldn't know that so it's better to pre-mix it 
Well, you in, you influenced me. You told me what to Safe buy those those dilute. diluting bottles and then the shampoos to use and how mm -hmm. to dilute them, and that was really helpful. And it did change the way my um, prep work. The outcome. Then yeah. It's good. It should. Look at how different Miss Nestle looks when she is all wet. He's so cute. She is a cutie pie. He's so cute. Kim, I can imagine you're learning lots about the oh, bath. I am very much so, yes. She's asking a lot of great questions, too. Oh, I like to follow my rinsing through with my hands. It still feels really silky, like there's product in there, you know. Now, I want to rinse here. So what I'll do is I'll lay that air back, but I will literally put my thumb over her ear hole. I want to protect it as much as possible from not getting water in it. So we're going to do the same thing over here. And you are such a good girl. So get the hair out of the way. I'm going to cover that with my thumb and pull. See, I'm holding on to her so my It's not going to slip out of the way. I'm just protecting it so it doesn't get water in there, but I can certainly rinse it. Good girl. We also brought Maui along on this adventure. So editor Sean says, here we are about to make a transition in this video, and the boy you're going to see up next is Maui. And Godiva says, I like Maui. In fact, in about two weeks, Miss Godiva here will be having puppies that she and Maui created. So, you know, he makes beautiful puppies. He is Sienna and Sierra's father, for example. And he is about to be a daddy again multiple times over. Such a good boy he is. Great practicing drying her yourself and step by step the bathing process. Yes, it was awesome. It's exactly what I needed to learn. And she's now so soft. What a beautiful coat.
So yeah. Honeybee is getting set up to have her bath with Amy. And Amy and Honeybee exactly. have met several times before. We're going to turn over here, sweetie. Yeah. There we go. Oh, right like that. Give me a little air away. Amy is teaching me some really great face techniques here. So we definitely have to clean around the eyes and the mouth of a dog, but we have to be very careful around those eyes. So what I like to do is massage the shampoo down in front of the eyes, over the eyes. When I'm pushing like this gently, she's closing her eyes anyway. So by her closing her eyes, I know I'm not getting anything in her eyes, but I'm also able to effectively clean there in front of her eyes where it does get pretty dirty, you know? So we were able to do a good job by using that technique there. That's great. Okay. Tools make all the difference in the world to this kind of work. So Amy Lee has this these clip-ons and she's adjusted it so that honeybee is in just the right spot for bathing. It is so it have cool. A lot of play to... It is so awesome to see this set up in person. Moving on out of the coat, you know. Good job, sweetheart. There you go. Oh, she's such a good girl. So, Amy, I learned from you the importance of letting the shampoo sit on the body, the importance of letting the conditioner sit on the body, and then deep rinsing and making sure we're moving our hands over the body to ensure that everything is rinsed really well. Yep. I don't think I did as good a job of bathing before I got addicted to your channel, but uh, I certainly have learned a whole lot about bathing from you, Amy Lee. Thank you. Well, that's awesome. Honeybee is now all prepped. She has been bathed, combed, brushed. Her hair is ready. Amy, I'm so excited to be able to talk to you about the clippers that I own. I had so much fun watching your recent video about all the different types of clippers and watching you navigate clippers and so forth. And so, of course, I own the KM10 because you speak so highly of it. I own the Kenshi Flash. Again, I love both of these. I'd like to get a third clipper as a backup. And the reason is when something happens with one of these, like I decided to test out that thing that you mentioned about taking off the blade and putting on a, a new blade, and I wasn't able to get it on myself. <laughs> I, it. I could get the blade off, but I couldn't get the blade back on. This is just, you know, when we compare that to an A5 blade, we can see why we have trouble lining this stuff up because... So this is the A5 blade that you're yeah. referring to. Goes on the wall KM10. Goes on that guy. And so and it clips right on versus... Easy because here's our blade release. Press and hold and remove the blade. All it has to do is sit right there on that. We turn the clipper on and it moves the drive and it's automatically gonna seat in there as soon as we press it forward. So you turn it, it just, on and then pop it in. Yeah, because that needs to move so it locks in, definitely. So, so that's how easy that You one. should struggle with them because it's a completely different design. So what I had to do when I got this Kenshi Flash and the Kenshi Flash 5 and all the other clippers that are adjustable blade clippers, I had to practice getting them on and off because I'm like, what's the trick? 
What's the easiest way? So I think I figured it out pretty good. So when you look down in here, you see a you see a little divot right there where my fingernail is in the divot. Right now it's in it. Okay. You see that divot? Yes. All you want to do, that's your guide to line to sit. Now, when you sit this blade on that, it automatically puts these little anchors where they belong. Okay? So we're sitting it down on that in that kind of it's, it's got to be perfect, too. Oh, I'm sorry. These go up and around that. Do you, do you see these little... See, there's just so many me mechanical things about these blades that drive me nuts. Okay, this has to go around these. So basically, when you sit that in there... Oh, it doesn't go around them. You put it under them. That's right. Okay, so when you sit this in here... And push forward, it locks on. And you have to push it hard. Okay, and so part of the reason why I feel like I need more of these <laughs> is I am not a handy person. And so if I have one of the blades that I use on this one, <laughs> one of the blades that I use on that one, and then I have another clipper with whatever the other blade is that I need to use, I'm not having to change the blades out myself. You can keep them on the clippers. Yes. Yeah. And then I don't have to be changing it out because normally I don't ever touch that to take out the blade but I thought okay I'll try it <laughs> but see, yeah and and to be honest these clippers are not designed for you to to constantly be switching out your blades like these this is so easy and so quick and that's why they were made these are professional dog grooming clippers that's what they're made for then these come along the, the, these shine in the area of Clinging out in front of the eyes, gently. And do I need a new blade on those, or is that blade okay? Cutting. How do I know if I need a new blade on that? It, it would want to drag through the coat and not cut. Okay. It would feel like it was dragging in the coat. It would feel like when you don't have it turned on and you're trying to push it through the coat. Okay. Does that make sense? It does make okay. sense, yes. So, now with these, you can use attachments which makes it very versatile however this clipper the kinti flash you have to have a different blade to use the attachment combs that you can use the joy z or the kenchi okay. well see i i love this and this is the one that i use for sanitary grooms so if if somebody sets this correctly so that it's on a 10 mm -hmm then I'm in great shape and I just pick it up and use it as a 10 blade. And, that's and then I don't I do any mine for too. And then I don't do anything else with it. That's it. And so I, I like that. And yeah. then this could be my 30 blade that the the um clip on combs go on. Or a 10 or a 15, whichever. You can use the snap on combs over a 10, 15 or 30 blade. Those three. Either three. I feel the 30 blade does better, but I could just be in my head. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I've heard you say that before, and yeah. so that's why we we set it up that's that way. That's made that this is an adjustable blade. So you can tell by looking at this little clip piece right here that this goes on my wall KM10. And you can or tell... any A5 clipper. Okay. And then you can tell this goes on my Kenshi Flash by just looking at the pin inside it here. All this little and mechanical if, stuff. if we set it up that this has a 10 blade on it and we know to use that on sanitary trims and that's all we use that for, then everything else gets done with this and then I get a backup one of these so that if we have a problem, we're in good shape. Does that sound like a good strategy? Yes, that'd be very smart to do that. Um, so I will set this to a 10 and I'll show you how to set it to a 10. Um, Again, getting the blade on isn't as hard as you think. It's just weird. So it has to sit in there perfectly. And then you, you have to press it kind of firm. But okay. you'll feel that it's, it doesn't have resistance. It's just you got to press it to be firm. So when you adjust your blade, there's a, a D and an S. It's very hard to see. They're very tiny. Um, detail is if we had a detailer blade on here, which this is the regular standard blade that came with the, the Kenji Flash. So we're going to go by what the S, which means standard, standard blade. And what it is, is when it's all the way down, it's a nine. 
When it's up one click, it's a 10. When it's up another click, it's a 15 length. And when it's all the way up, it's a 30 blade length. So I think we're just gonna keep it at a 10 and I, none of us are gonna touch it. So, we, so we Sandy and Kim, when we're using this, we Wait, just- you can always make sure, cause sometimes you pick, a, you pick one up and you accidentally click that, you didn't know it. You don't wanna clip a sanitary with a 30, they're gonna have major irritation. So always check, bring it all the way down. It's all the way down, we know that's a nine. Yeah. Up one click, okay. always do that. And then you know. I make the mistake myself. I make the mistake myself sometimes of going in a sanitary with a 30 and, and right away I'm, I see the dog do that and I, it's, it's irritating. And, so I'm, and I look, I'm like, oh shit. So the then I grab close. my skin works, lather it all over that area and hope to calm it down because it'll be irritated. So the 30 is closer? Really short. Okay. Yeah, this is where blades get really confusing. The higher the number, 15, 30, the shorter it clips. Oh, okay. So a nine is longer okay. than a 30. It's weird. And so, so here's what I think we need to be thinking about. This is our 10 for sanitary trims. Mm -hmm. This is our uh, 30, and then we use clip-on combs on top of that. And we can pretty much do the whole dog with those two setups sure. there. Yeah, that's, that's what I do. And then we'll get one more of these as backup just in case something happens and we need a backup clipper. That's a good idea. Sometimes things do happen. Yes. So, Amy, I, I got these guard combs that um, I saw you had recommended, and we have been using these guard combs with this. And that works really well. It's just us learning how to use these guard combs on a teddy bear trim. So Amy, I brought my favorite shears ever. I have shears. two sets of these, Amy. You designed with Kenchi such a great product. And so today I'm, I'm eager as we are working on the teddy bear trim to really practice with these shears and uh, making sure that we're using them correctly for the teddy bear cut. So what determines what's head and what's body? Well, you feel your dog's back skull. You can feel it. Right there it is. So just below the back skull is where we start our clipper work on the, the neck and the body. The rest we're going to leave alone for now. It's going to be head trim, okay, which is later. First, we're doing all the body clipper work and the legs. And also, hi, when we feel the dog's jawbone, and so here's her jawbone. We're going to come down right under the jawbone from from just under the base of the ear. Picture an imaginary line under the base of the ear in a U shape to the under the base of this ear. And that's our that's what we're taking off with the body and the rest is going to be head trim. So we're going to leave the head trim for when we get to that point. Right now we're doing body and legs. And we're going to do a half of an inch all over. And when you clip, you want to tilt your dog's nose down like this or so they're straight or tilted down because I want a smooth line. I think we might want to go a little shorter. What do you think, Sean? I'm going to defer to your expertise because oh. I think of you as the ultimate expert this in this. This is fine. I just wanted it to last a little bit for you. It's just this is going to look nice. Well, we all are here to learn from you and to get your guidance on how best. When we run it in, in, a, in a coat that's not, that's well prepared like hers, we run it through, we can see how much length that's going to cut off. You see? That's how I'm determining how, how much, what do I want to use to trim her body? And I'm like, well, personally, I know I use the half inch all the time and I love it. So that's why I'm choosing it. But... I think it leaves just enough coat to make a difference and cause me not to have to brush her like crazy for the next month or six weeks. But it also leaves enough coat that she still looks fuzzy. And that's important for the teddy bear trim. So it has Terrific. Some fuzz. So we're going with the half inch guard comb, which is which color? <laughs> that is, and they're hard to see, but walls, walls are identified. It says half inch right there and it's 
Some people say this is peach. Some people say tan. So I don't know. Okay. The peachy one. That reminds me of the colors of my dogs because people yeah. always have different words for the colors of oh, my yeah. dogs. Now, if we were to thinking about the quarter of an inch, obviously, you know, before we go and start clipping her, we can say how much would that remove? Well, we can look in here and and say uh, I think the half inch bit. makes sense. Yeah, I think the half inch makes a lot of sense, and maybe yeah. that's just what we just sort of say is our standard. I think it could so, be. So going forward for it's our mine. teddy bear oh. cuts, we're going with this blade right here. For the body and the length. And the clip on over top of the 30 blade. Mm -hmm. Yay. It's riding parallel. This to ride parallel with the skin. But you want to put enough pressure to kind of roll the skin and the fur in front of the clipper. In this case, this is a guard comb attached. Okay. The hair has to go through this guard comb and reach this cutting blade to trim. So that's these are just a guard comb. That's all they are. But you still have to put the right amount of pressure on it so that it feeds that hair in there and you get a nice looking clip. It's good to know where the blade, because sometimes when I'm doing the, with the guard clip, I think, where is the, Where's the, the blade? blade is not... Yeah, so. that's why this attaches over a blade. The only part of this blade that's cutting is this. This, this moves back and forth. Okay. okay. See? Okay. This moves back and forth because of this blade drive, okay. driving it, and that's what cuts the hair. So, if we forgot to put our guard comb on and we gave her 30 blades, she'd be skinned. Yeah. But that's okay. how short. So, that th this is leaving this much length. Okay. Whereas the teeth on this leave that much length. Okay. You see how you can determine? Mm -hmm. That's okay. why these guard combs. And you just easily seat them on here. You seat it and they push. Bring on and, and the, these two sides are lined up properly. If it's not lined up properly, you won't be able to get it on right. right. So that has to be centered on there. And you can usually lay it on there and you can feel that it's centered. Okay. Give it a pull forward and it just sort of okay. locks into place. So, Shauna, that's your quick little lesson for you. Let me. If I would, a lot of people I watch beginners and they're going like this. Yeah. You're not doing anything. You're not even, you're not, you gotta be against that skin. Now, there are times where we do what's called skimming, mm -hmm. which is this, mm -hmm. but that's not for a beginner. <laughs> that's instead of scissor work, you know, you would skim the shape of that leg in. So you wanna move the clipper in front. All right, oh, I, so what happens here, like above the shoulder, you're like, okay, I need to clip that, not hard. I, I pull the skin taut a little bit here. It's not enough. What do I do? Well, here where I've already clipped, I'm going to stretch the skin up a little bit. Pull that tight so I can get that in those areas. Mm -hmm. See what happens? Mm -hmm. So you do have to be real careful in the flank right there, but you can, with these combs, you can curl it right on and down into the leg. A blade would be dangerous. This is very loose skin on a dog. But we're using a guard to attach it. So use those thumbs a lot. Uh, here, here, yeah, here, you'll see me with my finger. My finger just twitched out. Look at it. It's, oh, it's the trigger thing. So I'm pulling the skin here around just by, so I can get to it. And then, and then here, I'll raise it up a little, and I want this leg, I don't want her leg bent like that, I can't clip like this. So I'm going to put my hand here and encourage her to straighten the knee out, and push down on her hock to straighten this up, so I can nicely slide in there with a clipper. Because that, that can be very challenging. I can't get in to those areas I want to trim, right? Bring the hair around. Look at this. Take, roll that skin. They have very loose skin. Use it to your advantage when you're clipping. Roll the skin around so you can see it. Another thing that's helpful. Tip her up on about a... 45, come on in here like this. 
only with a guard kind of a blade this could be dangerous this is tender skin in there but now i can get at all that and you want to curl your clipper in and out like bring it in and up here towards the belly button but it, these are hard areas to clip these are probably be your biggest struggles and that's probably why you know after sean worst on honeybee those were the areas i had to go in and clean up because those are probably areas of struggle but it's good to know your areas of struggle so you can really hyper focus on them and try to hone those skills no, no, no. No, no. and practice harder in those areas that you struggle with it's okay baby Hold on. Wait a minute. All right, so that's that's pretty good. Cause it's honeybee. Yeah. It's his honeybee. Okay. All right. And here, I want to try to get this a little better. So I'm gonna pull that skin a little hotter. Not tight. They're hurting her. But just tighten up the skin a little. And also pulling this up. That pulls that up so I can clip it. See? That's pretty good for a preacher. And now you've got us feeling like we can do teddy bears <laughs> on the body. And next up is learning how to do the head. And that's the most challenging part. Especially <laughs> for go up two guard comb lengths higher than what I did on the body. That's kind of a good rule of thumb. Two lengths longer than the body blade that I chose, which this is a half an inch, so two lengths longer would put me at three quarters of an inch. Five eighths is the next one. So this is telling us that the honeybee is, is ready for clipper work because the comb is going through it. Sorry, honey. Okay. So I like to come forward with a guard comb on the head because it just seems to be more accurate for me and under the chin. If we're setting this in to be part of the head, top the top knot, and we're not going to differentiate where the ear set is and the top knot, then I don't want to run this anywhere near that area. I'm going to have to scissor it. So the only thing I'm going to do is set the length on the top of her head and see if it's barely taking anything that's that's the right length and we're just coming a pass straight over the top i'm not coming down into the ear good job sweetie i want that same length directly under her beard only to set that same length now i know that this length and this length are the same that's going to balance her head trim automatically. Fabulous. And then everything else becomes scissor work? Yes. Oh, great. So This makes it so much clearer, Amy. We could, we could, you know, do this here, but depending on the shape of her, if we're following the contour of her shape, it may not give a round look. It may get a little bit like what happened with Reddy. This is editor Sean popping in here to point out what happened with Reddy. So this is one of those places where I would say we, in essence, made a mistake in doing the teddy bear trim. We didn't do his ears right. There's an indent here that, and then we cut along the bottom of his ear and we lost that round teddy bear look. So that's what Amy Lee is referring to when she so says So while he definitely looks adorable here, what an adorable little puppy Reddy is, the ears sticking out like this, I call them more like Mickey Mouse ears than the teddy bear ears. So when we're looking at our inspiration photo and we're wanting to be able to groom more like that teddy bear look. That's what could happen. So I say we need to scissor, and scissor work is not easy, especially for a beginner. So that's challenging. With scissor work, you have to really know the shape you're after. But this is where those Kinshi sapphire shears make all the difference because we have the rounded one, we have the blending shear. Is, oh, that, is, yes. is that accurate? Uh, yeah, the straight shear, the curved shear. 
These are the shears that we're going to be using on our teddy bear trims, and Amy's going to show us how to do so. All right, so this is a curved straight, and this is the blender. I may need a chunker for her, but I have that over there because that's what I prefer. But so we have this length set, we have this length set. Now we want to make sure we leave this hair over the ears because we are going to use a curved shear and we are just going to finish tying that shape in over the head. And you want to hold like you're drawing a line and it matters what angle you're looking at your dog or else you know, you, you'll be looking at them from the wrong angle and you will, it won't match. And sometimes just having her look down, so comb it all out and up and then give it a shake, let it fall the way it's gonna fall. And then let's just angle it into the ear. And this is tricky. This is scissor work. I mean, this is having, you know, the ability to look at it and know what to do. And it takes time. So that's why it takes practice. So you have to allow yourself that practice and not be too hard on yourself. Well, this is what we want to learn. And we are so committed yeah. to it because we have little ones that look so cute in this style. So earlier today, you saw me go in here and just clean up very gently. It was on a 10 blade setting. But I'm only using this corner right here and it's oh. going to pop out. And if you don't comb it out, you'll think you're done and the dog will get down and run out outside and shake its head and it's got a bunch of hair sticking out. So now from corner of this eye to the corner of this eye, that's our guide. We're going to go straight across just from the corner of her eye to the corner, that outside corner of that eye to the outside corner of that eye. So is it like creating a visor? Is that the this way to is, think of it? Creating that visor? Kind of, it's it's creating, it's setting the, uh, it's, it's a visor would come out. Okay. So I wouldn't say it's a visor really, it's creating, um, the top of the, the head, really, the separating that. Now I want to show you that trick on the side. So if we leave all this, it's still cute. And I can come in here and I can round this in. But this looks a little, you know, what's it doing there? So this is where this is, you're able to, if, if you just try to take the hair that is above the corner of the eye. Scissor it up. It's okay, honey. And curve it back a little bit. Just from the corner of the eye. Hold on, honey. Just a minute. It kind of gives her a little bit of a an eye lift. And then we will round that up a little bit. And then the hard part is matching it on the other side. <laughs> That's always the challenging part. Oh. Master it for your dog because each dog wears a teddy bear trim slightly different as far as, to far as the head. So I think setting the length with, with two guard comb lengths longer on the top and just under here gets you in a good spot because that sets these two lengths evenly. And then from there, we we bring it all up to that and bring it all around to that. And this is different than how we've been approaching it. So this is great to see this like not this. not easy. Yeah. Because it takes an eye and you will We have train, to develop you that. train your eye, yes. Just like we had to learn how to hold the clippers and we had to learn how to hold yeah. the shears. I mean, it's learning how to see this. It's like, yeah. even for us to be able to distinguish what we have about the ears and the ear placements, 
uh, I think has been important today. Yes. Yeah. And see how I, I kind of pull that lip back? Yeah. Because when you don't, it's a different shape. Mm -hmm. When you stretch it straight out and back, now I can see, I can get it even. I saw well, a little work to do. I'm just trying to soften. And I use, when do I use these thinning shears? I use the thinning shears to soften those scissor lines so it looks natural. Because obviously when we use scissors, you know, it leaves lines. It's like, oh, you can see every cut. No, it, you, you know, you can do a nice job like that. You, you see a little bit of it, you know? So those blending shears down forward. Okay, baby, good. And you can picture a little bit of a round okay. shape and scissor along that pictured imaginary so if it was round longer, line. Yeah. Yeah, she looks adorable. Love what you've done do with her. Like it. She really does. Really, really cute. Great teddy bear shape. Yeah, but did you see how we decided how we were going to balance that by setting the length on the top and the length underneath? Sure. I think that's important. And yeah. That's hard to do. You'll learn that. You're learning that now, you know? That's right. Well, in essence, we're letting that guard comb set that top right at the top of the head and then right underneath the chin, and then everything else is scissor work around that. Scissoring it into the top and around to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like shapes. Just like shapes. That makes so much sense. Yes. Sometimes, you know, I like to lay the ear back and see what's going to pop out. It's, it's helpful. Always comb, 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 comb. Things are going to keep popping out, and you'll think, oh, I thought it was down. Let her get down off the table, and where did that stuff pop out? Well, and to your point there, Amy, sometimes what we do in our grooming is we might do a part, and then we take a break, and we come yeah. back in a little while, and we do another part. Sure, and that's okay, especially if you're learning, because you take longer. Give the dog a break. And you need a break. Reset your mind and look at your dog. Give her a break. Look at the dog and say, I know what I need to do as soon as I get her on the table. Breaks are good. And, and as a professional groomer, you don't get those opportunities. But, you sh you know, you've already gone past that already in your skills. She's just so beautiful. She's beautiful. She's her face. She's, she's just the eyes. And Kim and I are going to do the same thing with Sienna and Sierra sometime soon. We're yeah. going to apply everything that we've learned here. Yeah. yeah. You may find that you, you're like, oh, what did I do wrong? But well, just keep practicing until we get it. Yeah, be your own worst critic. That's all. Just critique your work and say, I think I know what I should have done there. Just want to make that soft. So the blending shears are we just going over those lines, just going over those lines where we scissored to soften them so they don't look like scissor lines, you know, right in there. So I'm not coming up in here. I'm just going over the lines, scissoring the lines to soften them. Excellent. Now, the one thing that is Sandy's asking about the beard. So. With a teddy bear trim, pull it up and out. We don't really want anything going past the that sheet. dome. Yeah, that dome that we create. That so otherwise it's going to be unbalanced. Okay. And then it looks good. Any, any which way you look at her. See that stuff there? We're gonna blend it away. I'd have to be holding that to make sure I'm not, I don't have the ear in there. I, I pulled her ear out of the way. And it, you, okay. use your comb. Your comb's going to tell you. Okay. Where's the skin? Um, okay. Yeah, your comb is so handy. Okay. Where is the skin? Where's her jaw? Okay. Yeah, for sure. Lift the hair out. Feel the skin. Find it. 
pull this taut so there's no loose skin. This looks fabulous. I could really fine tune that. But she just keeps going. Well, she's, this is great. She's done. You yeah, know, this she's is, just, I this is know. really, really good. You've given us so much to practice and play with here. Good. Excellent. Yeah, okay. So you don't want them really to go past that. You don't want to do the ears until you do all this. And then you know how long this is. You don't want the ears past that, really. The beard. Yeah, you're just trying to... Keep it even. And you... Do you see I just barely trimmed anything? Mm -hmm. You don't always have to trim a lot. And you don't say, well, I have to trim all the way along. No, you don't. If the hair's hanging just right, I... I there. Yeah, leave it alone. I only need to really trim here. Okay, girl. And then I can look at this one level them up mm -hmm. and see if they're the same length as long as she's looking straight and say this one needs to be a little shorter over here okay and before you would trim i know where her ear leather is but if you weren't sure feel it mm -hmm. and you think, so oh, you know how much, much you yeah. have to work with mm -hmm. yeah Oh, she looks so cute, Amy. She really does. I'm picking at her now. I'm like, this side doesn't match. Hold it, baby. Well, to us, it looks fabulous. There. Great anyway. job. Can you okay? and pull forward a little bit now and smooth that area down. Okay. And we're probably going to do that on Nessie to open her eye area up a little bit. Can... So then take the hair and part it on both sides so you can see what belongs to what side. Okay, honey. See, so I think the key is using the blending shears in there. Yeah, but like scissors. Okay. So like I'm I'm just okay. scissoring on the lines I, I was scissoring on. Right. It, and, and it really softens it. Look at how great her face looks. And, and combing constantly, combing, 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 so you can see what's out of sorts. Oh my goodness, Kim, didn't we have a great time with Amy Lee yesterday? We had a fabulous time. Amy taught us in her new salon how to do the teddy bear trim, and we are just about to try it right here in our group. We'll save area. that for another video, but if you haven't already, check out Amy Lee, the Go Groomer, and this video, Teddy Bear Haircut on a Cute Fluffy Dog. You'll see a dog you recognize. In fact, on Amy Lee's channel, The Go Groomer, you will find videos where Amy has groomed several of Just our dogs. scroll down on her channel to the section that says specific dog trims instructional and there you will see a couple of our dogs. Give those videos a look-see. Amazing work, Amy. Thank you so much for all you teach us. We love you so much.